How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the NBA Slate Starter Podcast. I'm your host, Eric, here alongside my buddy, Rin Pack, as we break down the Thursday five-game NBA DFS slate. Uh, wild day in the world, wild day in the NBA. Uh, boogie nights, if if you want to call, call it as such. Uh, it was fun to see DeMarcus Cousins back just firing up that first quarter. Uh, it kind of fizzled out a little bit, but still put up a pretty good fantastic score on DraftKings. Uh, might be tough in the optimal on FanDuel with Embiid and his score, but we'll see how it all finishes out at the end of the night. Uh, Rinpak, how you doing, buddy? Well, we got to see some Boogie back at it again. I mean, it's been a couple years since we saw Boogie the way he was with that. Obviously, coming off and torn Achilles and ACL, we've been robbed of some vintage Boogie. And losing out on his prime has been tough, but we got to play him at some very cheap price tag. He was $10 on Yahoo, I believe, 4300 on DK, and I believe 4700 on uh, FanDuel. Mm-hmm. They're all very, very favorable Boogie Cousin prizes, and I was excited to play him and smash him in many, many lineups. And unfortunately, that news came right at right before the 7 p.m. games. I would have loved that to come later in the day, right? I don't think the ownership would have been as high, and we would have had a more significant edge. But the nature of DFS, and I think it made it really wild in the sense of 11 games slate, there's all everyone was really counting on like the Clippers news, but all indications seemed like they're both going to play. And Kawhi playing his first back to back is the biggest NBA story of the day uh, since April 2017, I believe, is his first back to back. But some sad news: we saw injuries, a uh, significant injury to Markel Fultz, where he's going to be out for the year. Really tough loss for the Orlando Magic, in my opinion. Yeah, he's somebody that uh, kind of kind of had a career renaissance. I mean, he's young, so I mean, I, I'm hoping he can get back and, and look great uh, in the near future. But uh, yeah, tough loss for them. Uh, it's going to be a lot of interesting rotations going forward with Cole Anthony and uh, Michael Carter Williams and some of those other guys in Orlando. But uh, we don't have to deal with them on this slate. Uh, and we'll get ourselves going here. But before we do, uh, if you could just click the the thumbs up down there if you're watching us here on youtube uh click subscribe hit the notification bell so that you know when all of our content is going live here at awesomeo and uh if you're listening to us on any other platform streams just enjoy so uh we'll get going here at point guard uh over on DraftKings, luka Doncic sits at 10 5 uh, after all of the slander we heard from all of the people, Luka Doncic decided to put up his first 70 spot over on DraftKings with a massive outing against Houston. So uh, nice to see a little bit of a ceiling coming from him again. Not that we ever questioned if he had one. Uh, LeBron James with his permanent tattooed Q tag uh, sitting there at $10,000 over on DraftKings where he has point guard and small forward eligibility. Kyrie Irving at, at 9600 So a pretty small bump compared to what I was expecting. Uh, he did fizzle out a little bit towards the end of that game but in 30 minutes he put up 51 and a half DraftKings points so you gotta still think that that's a pretty advantageous tag as he uh, faces off against Philadelphia uh, over on FanDuel Luka Doncic sits at 11,100 so uh, just pretty much in the same ballpark a little bit more expensive but different salary construction in terms of FanDuel and DraftKings Kyrie is all the way up to 10k over there and then Damian Lillard at 9,200 so uh, actually cheaper on FanDuel than he is on DraftKings let's talk a little bit about these point guards up top and who you prefer yeah I mean a short five game slate but um, there's quite a bit of studs in this point guard position similar to the other night uh, we got Kyrie and Luca. they definitely stand out to me and LeBron has obviously a questionable tag as well keep an eye on that situation Anthony Davis also is questionable with an adductor injury so potential Lakers might sit AD they've yet to sit LeBron so we got to monitor that situation I know we're all accustomed to them, accustomed to them both playing, but there might, there's going to be a day where one or both sit. So maybe we got to be prepared for that. But talking about Luca and Kyrie, I, you got to like them both. Luca versus Denver. I mean, I, I like that matchup for Luca quite a bit. He's played decent against Denver in the past. I mean, he's put up around fit, you know, north of 50 fantasy points, and I think he's played them five times or six times. I'm looking at it. I think he's done it five out of, five out of six or four out of six. So. I know it's a steep price tag, but I think still without Porzingis, and we saw him kind of have that bounce in him last game out. They changed the starting lineup and it ended up having Hardaway uh, come off the bench. Luca and Hardaway uh, shared a majority of the minutes together. Carly did mention that they think he likes that for Luca, just the way things are without Porzingis. And Hardaway uh, was assisted on many of his buckets from Luca, so which helped Luca get to his triple double, I believe, last time out. So. Luca was very promising against Houston. He, against Denver, he might, he might he has the highest upside of anyone on the slate here. Kyrie Irving was sensational in three quarters without KD. So 
you're going to like that. But Damian Lillard's playing against a terrible Minnesota defense. I'm going to have to like Dame Lillard quite a bit. Can't really go wrong with any three of those. And Ben Simmons against uh, Philly is another great option as well. So against uh, Brooklyn, excuse me. Hmm. And he has triple double upside. I like all these studs quite a bit. It's going to be tough for me to go down any value. Is there any values uh, that you sticks out to you right now? Guys, I mean, the night before, <laughs> I'm I'm digging. It it looks brutal. I mean, Dante Exum is going to be out here for a long time, and you know he was kind of the guy that I was punting underneath 4K when he put up that negative 0.5 game. So that was enjoyable. Uh, DeAndre Melton rejoined the rotation over there in in Memphis. He's over at 3,300 over on DraftKings. He only played 16 minutes his last game, but looked pretty decent. And so I could see maybe a little bit of a minutes minutes buck coming up there. Uh, I thought he looked better than Tyus Jones for a lot of that game, but. Uh, obviously Tyus getting a majority of those minutes. So uh, looking at like a pure punt, you've got him and then uh, Tyrese Maxey, who who basically didn't play today. So a couple of those guys that I might have been considering before, uh, not really considering for this five gamer. Uh, it seems like a really good spot to go pay up and, and get contrarian elsewhere. Uh, if you really were looking for somebody that you like had to play, uh, we saw Patty Mills get out to a hot, you know, opening quarter quarter and a half uh, last game out against the Clippers, put up 35.25 DraftKings points. I bet he gained some ownership over at 4,300, but I'm going to play his historical numbers and just say no uh, probably to that too. So I think I'm on board with you too in, in making sure that I pay up in for one of those studs because there's just too many guys who have 50, 60, 70 point upside to pass on. Uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of just covering the position. You want to keep on moving? Yeah, no, it definitely seems like a spot, especially on DraftKings, uh, to use that utility position at the guards to get that extra stud in. As we do, we'll go down the positions in the shooting guard, and like there might be some value there, but man, it seems like a great spot to pay up. Yeah, definitely agreed. Uh, over on FanDuel, on shooting guard, you've got CJ McCollum, who's just continuing this little tear that he's on. Uh, he's He looks great in the offense. Uh Kind of flattened out a little bit towards the end of that Portland game, but got out of the gate hot again. Uh, just putting up massive scoring numbers. You know, he's had over 20 every single game this season, uh, 26 in the last outing against Chicago. So uh, he's 9, 9K, which is just a jarring thing to look at. It makes you think Lillard's out. Uh, he's not. So uh, just, that's just how good CJ McCollum's been. Uh, DeMar DeRozan, 8,200 against the Lakers. That's a tough matchup. Uh, you've got LaMarcus Aldridge, who's back, and I would anticipate him uh, continuing to to start to cut into that usage as as time goes on here. So uh, so that's a pretty big price tag up there at shooting guard. Uh, over on DraftKings, there's Colin Sexton at 7,300. Um, coming off of a game where, I mean, I don't, I wouldn't really call it him burning us today. Uh, I had a lot of Colin Sexton just without Darius Garland there. Uh, I would expect, uh, is Garland going to be back tomorrow? It, what was that injury? I don't even know. It was know. a shoulder injury, I believe. Okay, so I'm not too injury. sure. Another like situation to probably monitor throughout the day. Yeah, so so I'll take a look at that. But uh, as long as Garland continues to be out, 7,300 on DraftKings is a lovely number for for Colin Sexton. And D'Angelo Russell, Russell 7,700 made me look like a smart human being as I jammed him in everywhere uh, yesterday. So uh, that was also pretty fun. Uh, tell me a little bit about your preference up here at Shooting Guard. Man, McCollum looks like Damian Lillard has been out for two weeks, and McCollum <laughs> is just like uh, getting to that price tag of 9K on Fandle, 8,500. That's Crazy. quite steep for me. I mean, but rightfully so. He deserves that price tag. He's shooting north, at tw- attempting more than 20 shots a game. I do expect that number to come down. Uh, 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 we'll see what happens. He's shooting like around 50% uh, from the field. So I don't like that price tag. It's too expensive. I, I guess. He might burn me against a very easy Minnesota matchup, but we'll we see. Keep saying, yeah, famous last words. <laughs> well, uh, well, I would rather try to save some money and go down to Russell or uh, potentially Demar, but that seems a little too steep for me right now, for especially for uh, CJ. But some value options that you can consider. I know Bruce Brown started last time out, and he was the min or near the min, I believe, on DK, and he was also the min on Fanduel. He. Played 23 minutes, put up 19 fantasy points. Bruce Brown is someone who's kind of a solid defender. Uh, I do think you can, if he's going to get 30 minutes, I think his floor is around 20 fantasy points or so. A little north of that, potentially. So it seems like an interesting value option. De'Anthony Melton re-entered this uh, rotation last time out. He played 18 minutes, and he's someone on FanDuel. I know he's point guard eligibility there, but on DK, he has shooting guard eligibility. He's really good at picking up some steals, so... 
he's nice in the sense he can potentially get you there by peripherals and you just don't have to rely on some points. That's one option to definitely consider. Outside of that, I really like Russell. I think you can definitely take some shots with a $4,800 Josh Richardson in uh, for Dallas. I know that's kind of cheap. He's one of those guys who's phenomenal stocks player. Steals and blocks is, or he's really good at picking those up. He was in, he was really good at picking those up in Miami. They kind of went down last year in Philly, but that's always in his game. So 4,800 is a nice, interesting value option as well. Someone who uh, is getting sh- kind of like a mixture of minutes. It's depending on the Rodney Hood situation. And Gary Trent's kind of cheap. I know he only played 19 minutes against Chicago last time, but he did get up to 32 minutes against Golden State the game before that. So monitor that Rodney Hood uh, situation. I know Hood is, uh, was marked as questionable earlier tonight for tomorrow. So keep an eye on that. He seems like a sneaky low on GPP option. I'm good to move on to the small forward position. Yeah, same. Uh, I guess he's small forward eligible, so we'll get over to him over there on FanDuel. But one last guy for shooting guard. Uh, Danny Green just continues to be on fire for Philly lately. Uh, he's now had over 20 DraftKings points in three consecutive games. Still has that depressed price at 3700 uh, coming off of a 32.25 DraftKings point game again today. Him and Seth Curry just kind of are getting wide open threes in that offense with Embiid and Simmons rotating around. Like uh, Doc has has everybody firing over in Philly right now, so they they look really really good. So uh, that's just one more guy to throw into the fray. Uh, before we get over to small forward, uh, we continue to have the 2021 promo code uh, that you can use going to Osmo.com. You can just for twenty dollars get twenty one days of Osmo Plus Platinum. Uh, and we have NHL that just had contests put into the lobby for DraftKings. We have MMA coming up on weekends, NFL playoffs this weekend, uh, NBA. Uh, just come out and try out all of our products. I guarantee you, you will not be uh, you will not be disappointed in what we have uh, that we're putting out every single day. So uh, check out check out that promo code. Uh, go over to uh, Osmo right now and go uh, fire up 2021 for the promo. Uh, over at small forward, we have on on FanDuel LeBron James ten one uh, game time decision. We just have no idea. Uh, it seems like he's just going to keep playing through every single one of these Q tags, and you know as tilting as that can be for the most part. There's also going to be a little bit of an ownership edge, and on on FanDuel specifically, where you have to play two small forwards, he's continually put up three fifty point uh, or better fantasy games. So uh, if you're looking to pay up a, a position, uh, small forward seems like a good spot to kind of gar- get those guarantees points and move on with with LeBron. Uh, Tobias Harris sits at 7,900. And then Michael Porter, uh, your boy, you, the one the one and only Michael Porter uh, will be returning from his seven-day quarantine. So that'll be an excited deal for, for him. Not so exciting for Will Barton, whose value is going to plummet with Michael Porter back. Uh, but talk to me a little bit about this small forward position. Yeah, excited to uh, see Michael Porter return to the court for Denver. He is priced up at 6,700 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DraftKings. And Porter's uh, price has definitely gone up from the days he was in his low fours last year. Uh, I'm going to like uh, potentially, um, obviously, Karis LeVert stacks out to me on uh, DraftKings. He's someone whose minutes were cut off. I was surprised that he came off the bench last time, but in 21 minutes against Utah, he did put up 36 and uh, three quarters fantasy uh, DraftKings points. So you can definitely consider Karis LeVert. He's shooting guard eligible on FanDuel. So keep an eye on that. Seems like someone who can easily have 40-point fantasy upside over there for that price tag, which would be very nice to take advantage of. Other options, uh, someone who's still continuing to perform really well is Kelton Johnson. He's now up to 6,500, been really, really consistent throughout the season so far, playing around 30 minutes, getting around 30 fantasy points. He's had some games where he's north of 40 fantasy points as well. So seems like a nice GPP option there. I think Joe Harris, I know, came off the bench. Which was kind of disappointing, but I think I can expect those minutes to go up against Philly, where they're going to need his shooting for that game to be um, kind of competitive for both ends. Uh, so I think we can definitely look at Joe Harris as a GPP option. He doesn't seem too safe for cash cash anymore because he's coming off the bench. We'll see what happens once KD comes back, though. Yeah, it'll be I nice think- to have. Oh, it'll be nice to have that lineup 
uh, right from the get go, you have that Philly Brooklyn game that locks at seven thirty Eastern time. Uh, in terms of this slate in general, you have a 7.30 game, an 8 p.m. game, and then a 10 p.m. Uh, trifecta. You have the last three games of the slate all at 10 o'clock, which I can't really recall a slate looking like this uh, for as long as we've been doing this. But uh, it definitely is going to be one very, very, it will behoove you to make sure that you have the starting lineups for all of those games coming out because the Brooklyn one specifically could look very, very different from from game to game. Uh, but they looked great last time out, so maybe they keep that same rotation going forward for a little bit. But if they have a hiccup, which I could assume happening against Philly, I could see that getting shooken up as time goes on. But continue on. I'm, I'm sorry to interject. No, you're good. Uh, I was just going to say, I mean, obviously small forward at times on FanDuel, especially you can pay down at certain options. Mm-hmm. Isaac Okoro's 3,600. I mean, that's a, <laughs> I a played him in some lineups today. We'll get to the listener league. That was an oopsie. I just want to say... I, I liked Isaac Okoro a little bit, though. I, I, I got a little minutes enamored. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do that again. I think if you're minutes in, in enamored, you can go up, spend 200 extra dollars for Derek Jones Jr. That's a great so idea. I think, I think that's a better option than <laughs> Yeah, Isaac I'm going to do Okoro. that. It's great. Uh, tout life is hard, by the way. I'm just going to throw that out there. You don't want to, you don't want tout life. I want to be play life. Like, I, I want to be good at playing. So, so yeah, no, no more talking about Isaac Okoro. Uh, one other guy sitting down here at the at the bottom end, uh, Anthony Edwards' price continues to plummet. Uh, he just continually has been disappointing for the last three, but you saw a couple of those mid-20s outings earlier in the year. Um, he's just really not getting any other ancillary stats. He's just basically scoring or he's not, uh, which is kind of a bummer because... You know, he's somebody that I thought could maybe do what Lonzo Ball's doing and just fill up the box score. So, uh, but at 4,100, I'm willing to take a couple of chances on him over there on, on FanDuel. At 4,700 on DraftKings, no thank you. I can I can do without that. And if I did want to punt with one of those 48 Minnesota small forwards, might as well go with Culver there at 4,100. Or yeah, 4, I think the... Yeah, on Culver, you can definitely punt with him. I think I do expect those fantasy outputs to uh, fantasy outings to go better for him uh, down, down the line before Cat comes back. So maybe we can catch that Culver game. Um, a la channel his inner Juancho Hernan Gomez tomorrow. So oh, dear maybe God. Speaking of, let's go on to power forward. Here we go. Uh, we'll start it up at the top range with Anthony Davis over on DraftKings at 9,800, who looked great timeout. I mean, you should never be surprised when Anthony Davis looks great in a basketball game, but he looked legitimately the best that he had all season, uh, which we saw with the 58-point outing on DraftKings. Um, we go down to Kevin Durant and Porzingis out. Denmar DeRozan, 7,900. Uh, I'm not really super interested in that tag with LaMarcus Aldridge back. Uh, there's still upside there. He could still, he's he's still a scorer. He can still fill it up. But uh, guys who are just purely going to be shooting dependent, who aren't going to get all of the usage they were were that they were before, uh, LaMarcus Aldridge just kind of makes makes DeRozan a no for me. And then Tobias Harris at 7,500. Uh, kind of a little bit disappointing today, considering he played 41 minutes, didn't really get over 40, 40 fantasy points on DraftKings. But uh, somebody to go back and take some shots on in a in a high paced Brooklyn game. Uh, talk to me a little bit about these power forwards. So yeah, I, I think uh, Anthony Davis is always going to be a fine option, especially uh, if LeBron were to sit, but he hasn't sat yet. But I think you can definitely consider him. Remember, Anthony Davis is also questionable with an adductor injury. So keep an eye on that situation. 9,800, 10-4, fine option. Easily can be the highest scoring player on that five-game slate. I wouldn't project him like that, but it could definitely happen. I think we can definitely now consider Larry Nance, who is a power forward on FanDuel. And he's someone who's also really good at picking up blocks and steals. So I, I know he's been pretty poor to us the last couple of times out against Orlando, but I think he can bounce back against his favorable Memphis matchup, wouldn't you say so? Yeah, agreed. Uh, I would definitely say so. Brandon Clark at 5100 I finally saw a $300 price boost over on FanDuel. Uh, he's been kind of the uber chalk there for a couple slates in a row, but uh, somebody I'm still going to have interest at at 5100 despite the fact that he's had a low usage rating. He's basically the fifth option in that offense with everybody on the floor right now, uh, but still somebody who can, who can as long as he's getting more of his minutes uh, not with Joe Val, uh, with Jay Val off the floor, I'm going to be a lot more interested in Brandon Clark. Uh, and they've been doing an all right job of staggering. He hasn't played as much in the last two games alongside Jay Val. So somebody that I'm still going to have a little bit of interest in there. <laughs> JaVale McKee, it's so funny to see him at power forward on FanDuel, but uh, somebody that can randomly spike a minute 
minutes upside. If he gets 22, 23, he can be a low on tournament dart. Uh, if he's going to carry in any ownership whatsoever, that's a definite no. But uh, I like to target on on five game, four game slates, guys who could just spike an upside at any position. And so uh, Jay Val is somebody that uh, JaVale McGee in that situation uh, is somebody that I would have a little bit of interest in. Uh, anybody super cheap on or cheap on DraftKings that you would be looking at underneath 4K? Uh, Maxi Kleba, super perhaps. Che- yeah, someone not who's super cheap, but I think Robert Covington's always going to be yeah. a GPP option just because his minutes floor is very safe. I always expect him to play uh, mid to mid to low 30s. And then additionally, I think we can also consider in terms of cheap options. Would what what do we do with the Brooklyn situation in Jeff Green and Torian Prince? They're both power forward on FanDuel. Jeff Green is power forward center, I believe, on DraftKings. That's uh, interesting. But going back to your Kleber take, yeah, I think we could consider Kleber, but we got to monitor that situation again. I mean, Willie Collie Stein started the last game. I wonder what they'll roll out against Denver. So that mm-hmm. starting lineup is also in kind of flux as well. Well, and we saved the best for last. You've got to have a Wancho Hernan Gomez take now. There's there's no way around it. The people want to know, are you all in? 4,400 on DraftKings, home run fan duel, 4,200. Are we all in on Wancho round two? All in on Wancho after <laughs> Wancho goes 10 to 14. From I'm just the field. saying. I'm just saying it happened. Now we know it happened. And now you got to chase it at 35, 40% ownership, right? Yeah, he went five of eight from three. Like, like that's not happening. <laughs> like, uh, I'll take my chances. And uh, in terms of GPPs, I'll remove him from the player pool. Yeah. But there's someone in Minnesota who picked up some additional minutes out of kind of nowhere in Jared Vanderbilt. Yeah. Ryan Saunders just ran that out and just like drawn up this pure revenge narrative, revenge tour with Malik Beasley, Wancho Hernan Gomez, and Jared Vanderbilt against Denver. Is that like, why did Can it be a revenge narrative if you never actually played there or at the other team that you're now a part of, really? I, I'm curious. Can you still have revenge in your heart for such a thing? I guess so, because, yeah, he, he looked great. And he's somebody that I think is going to be a high um, a high point-per-minute guy. I mean, fifteen in 15 minutes in the first game, that was kind of the one that stuck out. I had a buddy who actually hit me up and was like, is this Vanderbilt Day the next day? And I was like, who? I had no idea who it was, and he plays for my team. So uh, that was kind of a disgusting thing. So I think you actually might be on to something there. Uh, he just kind of seems like he can fill up a stat sheet, but... Two steals and two blocks to go into that box score. Maybe that might be chasing it a little bit, but hey, we're looking for everything that we possibly can on a short slate to to be able to to be able to find the guy that can get you there and give you that diversification. So, so a funny story about Jared Vanderbilt. The first time I ever saw Michael Porter Jr. play was at the McDonald's All All American game in Chicago, and Jared Vanderbilt was also a McDonald's All American that year as well. So, they're both very very <laughs> different players. And, uh, but uh, I guess there I, is some talent there. I want to I want to now like one up you in storytelling, but I, I'll save mine for another day. I I, I went to school in uh, Iowa State and uh, played a little pickup ball with Doug McDermott and uh, Harrison Barnes, who were on the same high school team, Ames, Iowa. It was the dumbest high school team I've ever seen in my entire life to have them on the same team. But anyway, these are these are just the good stories that you get by checking out the slate starter every single day. We uh, we, we got to be more well rounded. We can't just go play by play by play. Oh no, we can. We absolutely can. We're gonna go on to center now uh, because God forbid we make this a forty five minute show on a, on a five game slate. So. Uh, looking up at the top range, there's this guy named Nikola Jokic. He's pretty good at basketball, and if you can play him, you should because he just basically triple doubles every night at this point. Uh, it's him. I mean, who would be the second guy in MVP voting right now? Like Embiid, maybe. I, I like. I don't even know who it would be. Like Jokic is so far and away exceeding everybody's expectations uh, for a guy who already had pretty lofty expectations. So sitting up at 10-9 on DraftKings, uh, that's going to be somebody that I have a lot of interest in playing just about everywhere that I can. Uh, 11-3 over on FanDuel makes you think a little bit, but from a raw points perspective, if you can jam in value at other positions, he's, you got to think that he's got, you know, with him and Yo- him and Doncic, the, the two highest ceilings on the slate. Uh, moving our way down, Joel Embiid, 9,500 as well. Uh, man, center is just stacked tomorrow. I could see a lot of tournament lineups just going Joker, Embiid, and moving on. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. And then uh, Drummond, I guess, at 8,400 is somebody that finally saw those minutes boost. All he does is get double-doubles, so we know that that's going to be there, but still only 26 minutes today. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some of those guys up top. 
Yeah, Paul Jokic uh, has to be the favorite for MVP right now. I mean, it's only been a week or two into the NBA season, but he has been phenomenal. Um, Obviously, just stuffing the stat sheet across the board, playing a ton of minutes, swinging and sounds, 11-3 on FanDuel, 10-9, rightfully so. I'm going to like Joel Embiid if he plays. It's um, against Jared Allen, and he has uh, handled – Jared Allen, pretty good. Last time out, he put up 68 fan- fantasy points. I think another time he put up around 79 fantasy points against uh, uh, Brooklyn. So he's he's handled Jared Allen quite well in the past. So I, I wouldn't mind saving that money and going down to Embiid. Uh, Drummond is fine. Uh, he played 26 minutes today. They did get blown out by Orlando, but there's been some concern there. I'm not sure why he's not playing mid 30 minutes, if not more. Uh, I did play some of him today. I'm a little skeptical now, but the upside is always going to be there with Drummond. He's a double double machine, which helps on DraftKings. And I, there's got to be a reason he, why he's not playing. Uh, I got to say though, on FanDuel at 9200, he's going to have no ownership. Like I would, I would have to assume. I think the field's gotten sharp enough. I, I think it's going to. It's going to flock all the way to Jokic and Embiid. Like 8,400, I think he'll still have some ownership over on DraftKings for for people. Who, I mean, we saw him have an upside at however many games in a row to start off this season, but 9,200 on FanDuel might have zero ownership, which make might make me like him more over there, which, as weird as that sounds. So uh, that's something I'm looking at there. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas. I also, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I Valanciunas against Cleveland, yeah, that's a fine option as well. He's played well against uh Drummond going back to when Drummond was in Detroit. So keep an eye on that. Is 6,500 in FanDuel and 7,200. Makes for a fine. I, he could easily get north of 40 fantasy points in this matchup. Yusuf Nurkic. Uh, yep. We just saw what Nikola Jokic just did to the Minnesota front court. Nurkic uh, looked like, uh, showed flashes of his old, old self. Only played 28 minutes, but that 28 minutes was a lot higher than what he was doing in previous games. Um, 28 minutes in uh, Yusuf Nurkic against this Minnesota front court, he could easily put up uh, north of 40 fantasy points. That's how good this matchup is for Nurkic. I like Nurkic on both sides quite a bit. 6,200 on both sides seems pretty appealing to me right now. Uh, one more guy to bring up, just because he dropped a nuke on everybody the other night, uh, Jared Allen. How do we feel about a Jared Allen uh, going two times in a row, this time up against Embiid? So... Uh, I, that's the perfect time to just hop off, right? Yep. He just comes off a train, a uh, massive, massive career. I, I want to say career game for Jared Allen. I think it's just time to hop off playing against yeah. a tough matchup against Joel Embiid. Could be the hardest matchup in the league, honestly, for any center. And I I think I would rather try to uh, pivot to Nurkic or pivot, pivoting to Jonas Fallon Tunis. Mm-hmm. I think those are all much better options. And Kind of weird to say safe after someone who just did that type of performance, uh, especially. Uh, that's how concerned I am against that Embiid matchup. Yeah. In the words of Fleetwood Mac, lightning strikes maybe once, maybe twice. But in this case, definitely not going to be twice. So uh, so I definitely like that take here as well. Uh, any other thoughts for this slate to wrap us up today? No, definitely go to awesomeo.com slash promos. Check out our 2021 promo. Uh, $20 for 21 days of Awesome Plus Platinum. There's a bunch of Millie makers this weekend in the NFL. NBA is just rolling out massive, massive contests. Take advantage of it, and you'll get hockey, PGAs back. MMA is going to have some massive contests on the weekends coming up. Take advantage of it. This is one of the best deals you'll ever see in the DFS industry, one of the best deals we'll, we have to offer. And if you guys are interested for like the whole year-long class, we're offering 20% off using the promo code HAPPY. You can find all information for this at awesomeo.com slash promos. And make sure to uh, check out at Awesome NBA for all NBA content tools, news, which is really key. And make sure to just tune into all the awesome.com programming we have for the rest of the day. So we'll, you'll check out the short form videos, strategy show, and the deeper dive and live before lock. And thanks for joining us every day. Your support's been incredible. It's a brand new show. We've really enjoyed the support that you guys have provided us in a short time so far. I can't do any better than that you are the promo king i am the promo i'm the apo- the promo apprentice can't even say it uh for for impact for me uh take it easy good luck to you guys on thursday bye good luck everybody